I'm not going to show you the pictures of Gdańsk, it's a, it's a beautiful city, I think all of you know. I'm not going to show you the video from the Eurovision contest because we failed again. But I'm going to quote uh, Alberto Zanchetti, the founder of the hypertension uh, research in, in Europe and I think all over the world, with a famous, very famous uh, sentence. Actually, Professor Zanchetti repeated again during the opening uh, ceremony that research on hypertension and development of effective and well-tolerated antihypertensive therapies have been among the greatest successes of uh, medicine uh, in the second half of the 20th uh, uh, century. So potentially, what can we do in the future? What can we do in terms of the improvement of the very poor control hypertension rates uh, uh, reviewed by, by, by Brian? Potentially, we can develop novel or additional approaches to cardiovascular disease management, or we can maximize the benefits of current uh, effective therapeutic strategies. And we witnessed during the years of the Milan meeting, uh, starting from uh, reserpine and diuretic, after 30 years, in the year 2017, we come to the moment, uh, a little bit uh, alluded by, by, by Brian, that about 90-92% of our patients, if we exclude those with resistant hypertension, actually might be treated by a single therapy. So from the moment in the beginning of the 70s, when you had no way to manage the hypertension, we are approaching the moment that with one tablet you might control vast majority of the patients. It's up to you how to combine different drugs in two or three tablets, but you'll be able to manage most of your uh, patient. And in general, the, the recipe for success is, uh, is quite simple. Appropriate treatment and adherent patients. So if we are able to solve those two issues, the control rate will go uh, to 80-85% in most of the uh, countries all, all over the world. The adherence is poor. There are various uh, reasons for that, and this is uh, the summary, one of the last uh, studies trying to evaluate the prevalence, the prevalence of non-adherence. We should realize that the vast majority of our patients are not adherent, and partially the complex schemes for treatments are responsible for, uh, for that. We should also put ourselves in the, the way that patient might feel if the management of hypertension is started. Basically, the, those uh, patients have no symptoms. Uh, they do not believe that they are high risk. What's a perception of, uh, of your patient? He would like, first of all, to have a therapy which would be very well uh, tolerated. It should be effective. It should bring the blood pressure really uh, down to the values which are mentioned in the guidelines. The patients would like to have novel treatment, tested in trials, but rather novel way of, of management. There's no doubt that this fix those combination, or rather I should say single pill combination is a novel uh, approach in management of vast majority of uh, our patients. It should be simple. But you know, it cannot be simpler than uh, one tablet uh, 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 a day, and then it should be affordable. So uh, it is a very, very important component that uh, such treatment should be available to our, uh, our patients. So I'll try to sum up a little bit what's already reviewed by Professor Borghi, by Professor Burgliant, by uh, Professor Williams. What is the current position in year 2017 of uh, fixed dose combination, single pill combination? So starting with the, the, the rationale, there are very, very many reasons why we should use this type of approach in management of, of, of hypertension. Which components should be considered for vast majority of the patient? How to guide our decisions in terms of choosing the, the right uh, combination? What's the true advantage of putting everything in one pill in terms of single pill combination? And a little bit about the, the guidelines. So what happened in the past, what might happen in, uh, in, in the future. So starting with the rationale, we know that uh, pathophysiology of hypertension is very, very complex. There are several mechanisms involved, and we cannot expect that by blocking one mechanism, we will control blood pressure for long term. We do not know in real life, uh, in a single patient coming to our office, what is the most important mechanism. So this is the, the reason that we are much more successful in getting blood pressure control if we try to block two or three mechanisms at the same time at the same time. We know this is much more effective, independent of the baseline monotherapy, uh, trying to add a second drug, then going to the maximum dose of, of monotherapy. We started to realize that actually vast majority of our patients will require uh, combination therapy. A very small portion of patients probably uh, can go on monotherapy, maybe with the new concept uh, mentioned by Professor Burulian, starting from the very beginning of a small dose of two drugs. One day in the future, we'll treat basically all the patients with uh, uh, combination therapy, just adjusting the dose and 
try to find the best combination of, of uh, uh, specific classes of drugs. So what about the, the components? We have uh, five major classes for management of, uh, of hypertension, diuretics, beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, ACE inhibitors, and ARBs. Uh, we know that uh, ACE might provide some additional benefit beyond the ARBs in terms of the effect on uh, bradykinin system, vasodilation. We know that uh, those drugs, they reduce uh, uh, cardiovascular and overall uh, mortality. Uh, this is uh, partially um, uh, tested also in patients without uh, uh, heart failure. And we know that among different ACE inhibitors, Perindopril is the one with the strongest evidence. There are several thousands of patients uh, in different clinical conditions when the drug was, uh, was tested. And most of the trials in combination providing additional benefits for using uh, such combination in uh, daily practice. So why the results uh, of those trials were, were positive? What might be the argument for using such a such approach? First of all, the long-lasting effect of, of drugs. So uh, among the uh, ACE inhibitors, we know that uh, perindopril has a very, very long-lasting um, uh, effect. It's uh, tested not only in hypertension, but several other conditions. And in many trials, there was a major reduction in different uh, endpoints. So in patients post-stroke with stable coronary artery disease, post-MI, and diabetes, and, uh, and so on. So this is the, partially the, the reason. If you would consider five major, uh, major uh, approaches in terms of double combination, two of them are based on a combination of ACE inhibitor with a diuretic or with a calcium channel blocker. If you go all over the world, you would check the, the, the current use of the drugs. Slowly, we see in most of the countries that the most widely combination and back double combination is actually the combination uh, with the calcium channel blocker, probably uh, providing a little bit better uh, control of risk factors than the combination with, uh, with um, uh, diuretic. And of course, one of the arguments for such combination will be the uh, accomplished uh, trial showing the benefit of uh, combination of ACE and calcium uh, channel blocker. The evidence for the, uh, the other drug in such combination, amlodipine is, is, is overwhelming. Several trials uh, have tested uh, amlodipine and uh, this is a very, very good drug uh, which might be an ideal partner for combination with, uh, with uh, AC inhibitor because of uh, several factors. First of all, in terms of the molecular synergy, so if you combine the, the ACE and we know that the one of the major beneficial effects of the ACE inhibitors is the effect on endothelial function. Uh, then uh, if you would consider calcium channel blocker, they work on the total peripheral resistance. So you have the vasodilation, you combine those two effects, and this is the reason uh, the blood pressure is uh, controlled in the vast majority of the patients, and this might also uh, reduce the overall uh, cardiovascular uh, risk. In terms of the clinical synergy, actually the calcium channel blockers have the strongest evidence for the reduction in terms of uh, stroke uh, prevalence, uh, stroke uh, uh, recurrence, while for the patients with coronary artery disease, uh, ACE inhibitors uh, have the strongest position. Of course, for an individual patient, we do not know who is at risk of myocardial infarction, who is at risk of, of stroke, but by combining those drugs, we probably provide the best protection against both uh, complications of uh, hypertension, against stroke, and against coronary uh, artery uh, uh, disease. We have the evidence uh, for exactly this combination coming from the, from the clinical trial. Uh, the, the ASCO trial, very, very important trial in the history of uh, hypertension research, have clearly shown that such exactly the same this, this combination was beneficial uh, in patients with uh, hypertension independently of different additional risk factors. You, have, you can see vast majority of the endpoints were significantly reduced by uh, such uh, uh, combination. You can see that independently of uh, additional conditions, uh, independent of diabetes, uh, uh, obesity and so on. Basically, such combination worked in every subgroup of patients uh, tested in uh, the, uh, the ASCO trial. So, there's a strong argument to put this combination in a, in, a, in a single tablet, and some of the arguments were already uh, reviewed by previous speakers. So, of course, the improvement of, uh, of adherence, especially if the patient is taking several drugs, this might, might help. We have the evidence that combining uh, those drugs to a single tablet will improve the uh, compliance, and I'm quite convinced 
it's probably uh, the old meta-analysis sometimes based on the studies from 1890s showing the improvement of maybe about 20%. With the newer treatment, uh, putting it to a single tablet, the improvement of adherence would be, would be greater, as already shown by uh, Professor, uh, Professor Borg. We have also the, the evidence that uh, such combination might be helpful in those who are already in, on other double uh, uh, combination. This is the strong trial showing that independently of the previous uh, combination of uh, uh, antihypertensive treatment, the, this combination, single pill, reduce the, 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 the blood pressure, uh, even in the dose on uh, combination therapy, and of course the effect was even greater in those who were initially on monotherapy. So switching monotherapy to this dual combination reduced blood pressure uh, significantly. Of course, a significant uh, proportion of our patients will require the third drug. Uh, there's an ongoing debate how many percent, but probably between 20 and 30 percent of our patients will, will require a triple combination, and basically what we can do, we can go to the combination of ACE or ARC with calcium channel blocker and with um, uh, um, uh, diuretic. We know that uh, indapamide might offer several advantages over uh, hydrochlorothiazide in terms of the blood pressure reduction, but I think also in terms of the number of the clinical trials. There are so many trials done in the last 15-20 years with uh, indapamide, especially in combination, that completely outnumber the very few trials done with hydro, uh, uh, hydrochlorothiazide. So the benefit in terms of adrenal might be greater for, uh, for uh, indapamide than for uh, hydrochlorothiazide. Uh, we know that also the effect on metabolic factors uh, is uh, virtually uh, neutral. And overall, I think the most important argument to look for this combination will be the evidence coming from, from the trial, because the guidelines are based on a randomized trial, and we have the, the HIVA trial, the PROGRESS uh, the trial, the ADVANCED trial. All of those trials use indapamide as um, the, the drug tested uh, to prove the reduction in terms of cardiovascular risk. You might uh, ask uh, what kind of evidence we have for triple combination for having the um, perindopril, indapamide, and uh, CCB, amlodipine. We have only indirect uh, evidence uh, coming from the post hoc analysis of the advanced trial. We know that in advanced trial, the, the benefits of the treatment of, uh, with uh, perindopril and dopamide were obvious in patients with, uh, with diabetes, but the risk was especially reduced in those treated in addition with triple combination when the CCB uh, was added to uh, ACE inhibitor and, uh, and diuretic. This is a figure prepared by Professor Andrzej Tikarski uh, from Poland, trying to summarize the, the positioning of uh, such a triple combination uh, in our patients. So we have uh, the uh, ACE inhibitor, and the evidence in high-risk patients is probably stronger for the ACE than for, for, for the ARBs. We have the indapamide, uh, thiazide-like diuretic, better than thiazide, and then the number of the clinical trials, only the, some of them are exposed on uh, this slide, providing the strong rationale uh, to use it in uh, daily, uh, daily, daily practice. Already was mentioned by Professor Burgulian that sometimes we might be a little bit afraid by using triple combination uh, in, in our patients. So you give at the same time in one tablet in the morning AC inhibitor, uh, calcium channel block, and, 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 and diuretic. But this overwhelming evidence that such approach is safe and partially because of the pharmacokinetics, this is a, a figure pre prepared by Professor Filipiak from, from Poland, showing that basically that the profile of the drugs is, uh, is, is, is different for indapamide, uh, for uh, perindopril, and for very long-lasting amlodipine. So if you give the drugs for, for the drug, the tablet for several weeks in the kind of uh, stationary uh, status, basically they do not uh, maximize the effect at the same time. So kind of uh, long-lasting um, uh, blood pressure lowering, which results in a smooth control of 24-hour uh, blood uh, pressure. We have the study uh, using the triple combination, the, the PANIST uh, study, showing that uh, in patients who were uncontrolled on double combination, if you switch to just a single tablet combination of three drugs, you might uh, achieve a very, a very significant reduction of blood pressure control and improvement in terms of control rates independently of the stage of hypertension. Of course, in those with stage 3 hypertension, the effect is, is the greatest, but this is what you would like to have in those patients if you would like to get the blood pressure uh, control. And I think uh, also finally, in terms of the, uh, the, the, the advantage of uh, single pill combination, is just this, uh, the relationship between you and your, uh, your patient. You know, if you prescribe uh, just first drug and the patient is coming with uncontrolled blood pressure, 
if you are forced to prescribe the second tablet, it's a little bit a, a kind of failure for you and for the patient. The patient, you know, uh, trying to be compliant, changing the lifestyle, and still forced to take uh, another tablet, he thinks a little bit, so it was a little bit a failure of the physician, he didn't choose the right drug at the, at the very beginning. So if you are able to stay, maintain the treatment with one tablet, I think it's very, very important, because for, for, for patients, they do not care what's inside, it's just the size and uh, just the simplicity of treatment is very, very important. And then you, if you need, you can go to a triple combination, a single tablet, but for the patient of point of view, nothing changes. He's still on, uh, on one uh, tablet. And finally, the, the, the guidelines, already the 2013 guidelines stress the role of uh, combination and, uh, therapy, making it very, very clear that this is the foundation for anti hypertensive treatment in those with, without coronary artery disease, without congestive heart failure, because then there'll be a place for, for beta blockers. But for a vast majority of the patient, this is the way, um, uh, this is the way to go. What will happen in the future guidelines? We have the, the chairman of the, of the committee preparing the, the guidelines, Professor Williams. So we should uh, wait for one more year. Next year, during the meeting of the European Central Attention in Barcelona, the new guidelines will, uh, will, uh, will be uh, released. So in summary, there's very strong rationale, pathophysiological, epidemiological, clinical evidence to uh, go for the fixed dose um, uh, combination. In terms of the components, there's growing evidence for double combination, uh, the combination of uh, drugs blocking renal angiotensis system with uh, calcium channel blocker, probably this is the, the best way, and the, strong, the evidence in hypertension is much, much stronger for such combination for ACE inhibitors than, than, than ARPs. Of course, uh, putting it to one tablet facilitates the, uh, the compliance, facilitates also uh, our treatment, and this position is already uh, acknowledged by the guidelines, and uh, I assume, uh, I might guess, that we'll be even much, much stronger in the future uh, guidelines. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.